right, we're going to go ahead and jump in. Um, I'm Chris Miller. I'm the Vice President of Marketing here at Alibi Security. Again, we appreciate your time today. We know it's super valuable. We know there's a lot of other things you could be doing, um, but it is super exciting to have everybody joining us today. We've got a, a really cool session today. We're super excited to have one of our really valued partners uh, joining us today to kind of go over some of the new products they're launching that are specifically geared around video surveillance. Um, you know, the, the D-Link team, Chris, if you want to flip through the, there you go. We're going to be specifically talking about the, the newest line from D-Link, the newest switch line, which, as I mentioned, is specifically geared around features, functionality, and, and benefits that are derived around video surveillance and how we manage, how they can help you manage uh, network traffic and uh, some of the unique um, demands that video surveillance places on your network through the surveillance switch line. And we've got Chris Perez, um, who's here in Round Rock. So we actually uh, right down the street from Chris, which is nice to have kind of a local uh, director here who can help us out with all of our needs. And then we've got uh, David, who is over in Irvine, California, joining us really, really early from D-Link HQ. And we are just super excited to have these two joining us to launch into uh, a really good overview and more importantly, a demo of the latest surveillance switch line. And you're going to get a lot of great information. Uh, they're the technical experts, the subject matter experts on that. We actually have Norman Ragland on as well from our product management team. He'll be available to kind of help answer any of the uh, any additional questions that may pop up along the way. So Norman, feel free to ch uh, chime in where appropriate. Um, but as we before I hand it over to the D-Link team, a uh, couple kind of rules of engagement here. If you do have a question, put it in the Q&A box down at the bottom of your Zoom screen, right? We don't monitor the chat. I've got Q&A pulled up on my screen. I'll help moderate during this session. That's all I'm gonna do here. I'm gonna let the, the smart guys talk about the new products. And uh, where appropriate, I'll help kind of introduce the questions into the conversation. Uh, if we don't get to them, we'll try to roll through those questions at the end. So again, use the Q&A functionality and we'll help try to uh, kind of get to those throughout the session or at the very end. But um, without further ado, I'll hand it over to Chris, who's going to kind of walk us through a quick overview of the surveillance switch line, and then we'll jump uh, jump into the, the live demo as well. So thanks uh, again to the D-Link team for being on, and we'll, uh, you guys can take it away. Hey, thank you so much, Chris, Norman, Alibi Security. We appreciate you guys giving us this time to talk to your partner base, your vendor base. Yeah, we're very excited. Um, this is something that's been a long time coming, uh, getting a lot of feedback from our partner community, uh, our dealers, all the installers that go out and actually install this equipment. And um, a lot of that input, a lot of uh, the knowledge that we've gathered from our other switching lines, we've actually place all of that in our new series, our 200G series. And this is kind of a quick overview of all the solutions we offer from high all the way down to the low series here. We'll be fo focusing on a DSS 200G. But as you can see, we do have a very good switching portfolio. We go up to a, all the way up to 100 uh, gigabits per second, and then all the way down to our unmanaged switch series line. So we have a pretty wide and pretty good switching portfolio. But for today, uh, we'll be talking about our new DSS 200G switch. So really quick, it's, it's four models, right? So here, here they are. Um, some quick highlights here. Uh, very awesome to have 6 kV surge protection. Um, if you live in areas that are, are prone to thunderstorms, uh, power outages, devices coming back on, turning off, coming back on. Um, and you notice that sometimes something's not working properly um, or something goes defective that's connected to a PUE or um, definitely six KB surge protection could help with those things. Now, obviously it's not gonna work miracles if, you, if your outdoor PUE camera gets struck head on um, by lightning, um, you know, that's pretty much gone, but this could definitely help the majority of just lighter um, surges on the, the PUE network. Onvif, so support for Onvif. So, the, the alibi cameras that you all plug into your PLE switch will automatically be detected by the model number, the MAC address, and the IP address. So it helps 
simplification of installs for surveillance networks. So that's a great thing that we added. Surveillance mode, we'll talk a little bit about that. Again, auto detect security, alibi security cameras. PDLI, which is an awesome, very simplistic feature, but actually goes a long, long way that can save you time and money. Uh, perpetual POE and past POE function, we'll talk about that. ERPS subring and uh, the new 802.3BT 90 watt compliant um, POE. Uh, so definitely a lot to talk about here. We'll keep it short and concise. If, again, if you have any questions, enter it in the chat and uh, we'll make a little time for a live demo and Q&A. So side by side, here are the, here are the, uh, the four models, right? The max power, you see here max power, uh, max power plus, 20 port max power and max power plus models. So the difference basically is POE budget and port count, right? So you go from 130, 242, 370, all the way up to 518. Um, they all support SysKB surge protection on the ethernet ports. Um, we do have a fan list model that's very good to have in areas where you can't put it in a closet. Maybe it's in a conference room or it's exposed. Uh, you'd be surprised with a constant slight noise how uh, it can really bother someone, uh, especially if it's in their work environment. So we do have a foundless model. Uh, model That was a huge ask by a lot of our partners. Um, we need a foundless model to, for, for, for quietness in specific areas. And then smart bands, dip switches, QoS, PoE extended. Another feature that you all have probably done incorrectly, I know I have done it, where you're extending a, an ethernet run so, so far and a lot of times it's not really you, it's, it's you're being boxed in by your customer, do this, um, and it works. Um, but we'll talk about the pros and cons to that. Then uh, port isolation and PD Alive. Okay, so some of the brief highlights, again, of the DSS 200G series, smart fan technologies outside of the power supply. Um, you know, I call the power supply the, the, the wild card that typically tends to go out. You know, our failure rates are less than 1% overall, but if you dissect the 1% of failure rates, um, the majority is due to power. A lot of times we don't know how that's being plugged in. Our customers should have it surge protected and grounded and whatnot. Um, so I view that as the wild card, but the next one that we um, typically get RMAs for is, to, is the fans. And one of the things that helps improve the reliability of the switch is the smart fan technology. So a lot of switches just have the fan on all the time continuous. So ours is actually a smart fan technology. Uh, so it cycles and detects when the fans need to kick on. If it doesn't need to kick on, then obviously it, it, it won't turn on. But what this does is it helps extend the, the lifetime of the switch. So the MTBF um, that's measured in hours. So Having smart fans helps eliminate a point of failure. So that saves downtime. Um, it's more, it makes for a more reliable product, right? Alarm port, this is something that we, we had a lot of feedback that we want alarm port. We want more hands-on that we can do things on the specific switch itself, right? So we'll talk a little bit more about that. Again, the 6 KB surge protection built in onto the ethernet ports. Fiber up leak ports, a lot of the, uh, this, all the switches do have that, um, the new BT POE standard um, dip switches. Uh, this, this was something that was another ask by a lot of installers where you can actually physically install the switch um, by using the dip switches there. And we have a, we'll go over that more in detail in, in another slide here. And another ask too is viewing the POE status directly on the switch itself, right? So um, all the way from 25% to 100%. And then an alarm LED was another ask. So we, we try to create a switch based on, again, all, all, all the feedback and our knowledge of all of our product lines. You know, we looked at where are the security installers, access control people find? Well, what features are they using? What features do they want? So, so again, the dip switch is really, really cool. This is one of my favorites that they added to, to the switch, right? So dip switch one, they're all off by, by default, but you can enable it, right? So QoS quality of service, the type of traffic that gets sent out, what gets priority. So if you turn this on, this will allow for port one to get the highest priority 
right? So whether it's router internet connectivity, it's going to the NDR, or you have something mission critical that is on port one, and you want to give the traffic priority all to that specific port, and everything else is is uh, is second to that port. You enable that diff switch, and then that will do that for you, right? Then extended PoE. Uh, we'll talk about that more in depth. But if you wanted to enable extend PoE, if you wanted to go way beyond what you typically do, you can enable that, turn that on, and then that enables that up to 250 meters, right? So there's some pros and cons to that and things that you got to understand before you enable that. Um, but definitely one of the things that we were asked that, how can we do that? And then port isolation, right? So you can enable this and essentially none of the ports can talk to each other. None of the ports can talk to each other with the exception of the uplink or the outbound port. So, and then PD Alive, uh, we'll talk about that more in depth, um, but you can enable it directly from the dip switch here. And in the spanning tree protocol, you can enable that as well. So extended PoE. Um, so here's here's kind of the pros, right? You're you're going beyond the distance that's recommended, right? So the the exception is that the your bandwidth is going to drop to about 10 megabits per second. Uh, but you're with that, you're extending it up to 250 meters. And um, to make this function properly, you would need at least a cat six, uh, cat 5B, excuse me, or better. Right. So if you have that camera that's way beyond yonder and you know it's either running fiber or or um, you want to use the existing equipment you have, you could definitely make that happen. So and then PDL Live, it's, I have a really cool, very simplistic graphic on how this works, right? So essentially, you're configuring the switch to um, check to see if, if a device connected to this switch is, is responding, right? So um, very simplistic, you enable this feature, and what happens is the, the switch will actually go out and ping, let's say, the, the IP camera or access control device, uh, door reader, or whatnot. Anything with an IP address, you can enable this for. That's PoE powered, right? Um, it's pinging, it's replying, everything's good, everything's working. Um, and then all of a sudden it pings and there's no response. It tries it again, it pings and there's no response, right? So typically what we normally do, you, you know, if you're on site, you would take a look to see what's going on. Maybe um, something's wrong, maybe it's, uh, a power went out and the cameras did not come back on. Uh, so what the switch does is it actually reboots, turns off the power of that PoE port and it actually power cycles it and it checks to see if it's back on and then it sends you a notification. So really cool if you install one of these switches and it's at your customer <coughs> site, let's say leave for the weekend um, and then Monday morning, Stuff's not working right. There's power outages, thunderstorms. Um, maybe someone was working on the line outside and stuff didn't come back up. You would get a call and you would have to go fix it. You can log into the switch and cycle the, the PoE part, do it yourself. Or you can have the switch just automatically have it enabled. And it'll tell you after the fact, like, hey, there was a problem, but guess what? We, we, we re turned off the PoE, we cy power cycled and everything's uh, up and working. So really cool feature, very simple, highly recommend to use it. And then David, I don't, I don't know if you can speak to this, the Mr. Casada, you can unmute yourself and. Sure. Yeah. yeah. So the, the dual signature of the POE, um, or single signature or dual signature uh, in typical POE environments with ATAF, you have single signature, but with new cameras, new devices that support BT, it supports a dual signature. So you have the ability for the POE switch to basically optimizes the POE um, when it sends it to the PD device, the power device, such as a camera. So it can power just the camera portion, but if there's a heater that's part of the camera, the second signature can power just the heater part. So it, it helps with optimally providing power to the, the camera and not so much using just a single source of power. So it just makes it more efficient. Yeah, thank you so much, David. Thank you. 
right? So here's a common application. You know, you got your 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 PoE switch. It's uh, it's connected to an NVR, BMS, or whatnot, and you got a couple of PoE PoE plus IP cameras. You know, very good for this scenario. Access control. You know, door controllers, card readers. Um, you know, another common setup. You know, it can definitely power Wi-Fi access points. You can configure certain things, maybe QoS to port one, enable the dip switch where the router is connected, prioritize that traffic. Um, so the very common setup that you can use for this switch. IP clocks is becoming more popular. PoE IP clocks, another setup. Ethernet repeaters. Um, th this is kind of cool where we actually do have a uh, a PoE switch, it's the DGS-11005 PDV2. And this specific switch here is actually powered by PoE power. So this PoE plus switch, the DSS-200G, can power PoE plus to the DGS-11005 PDV2. And then from that, in turn, can power multiple PoE cameras, right? So uh, again, this has no power supply in itself. It's powered by the PoE plus from the, the switch that connects to it. But very good if you have a setup or, or an install that you kind of need to get those extra two cameras. Obviously, you know, there's a POE budget associated with this. Uh, you're not gonna wanna do a high-end PTZ outdoor camera, uh, POE power with a heater and all that. Um, that might not power properly, but definitely take a look at your POE budget for the cameras. Um, but this is one solution that's uh, available to you. Hey, Chris, can you go back to that clock slide real quick? Sure. Um, yeah, I think this one here, you know, with, with keeping the NTP with a lot of the hype vision products or saving the witness, there is, um, you know, some issues with NTP or daylight savings uh, where, you know, the, the time wasn't catching up. So this would actually help manage that for your customers uh, to manage the, the time sync. So for, for the guys out there that are using hype vision or witness, and you ran into that NTP issue or, or daylight savings issue, this will help manage that for you. Uh, so just wanted to chime in and, and put that in there. Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Norman. Yep. Appreciate that. That's really cool. POE splitters, um, you know, powering. We also make a device where uh, you can split it and power a non-POE camera. Uh, it's another use case for this uh, dealing surveillance switch. LED lighting, which is becoming very, very popular. And it's what, what the ask is here is a switch that has high POE budget. Uh, we do have a very good customer in lighted, in lighted Siemens that uses our switches for LED lighting control solutions. Um, they've had no issues with our switches, very, very successful deployments. They're extremely happy. So we're very much uh, have a lot of experience in this arena. And again, just overall, um, you know, very good for schools, business buildings, hospitals, hotels, retail. Um, you know, you can pretty much pick your use case for this type of switch, right? So, um, and then why dealing? Just again, enterprise grade quality networking, right? So we actually use a lot of the same components that our competition uses. So we will never be the cheapest. We completely understand that, but we use like Broadcom on the ASIC chip, for example. Um, we have very good competitive pricing, um, excellent, excellent warranty. And we have really good customers that can provide um, good feedback and referrals, um, you know, upon requested, right? So um, we're very, Proud of our equipment, you know, we stand by it by a very good warranty. And there's two types of warranty. For the majority of the products that we talked about today, it is a lifetime warranty, right? So I, for instance, just arm made a switch that was purchased close to 10 years ago uh, at a school district in Poteet ISD, which is kind of down in the San Antonio, Texas area. Not a problem. You know, it's it's it's, it's a full lifetime warranty. That's what that is. And then we also have a limited lifetime warranty for the majority of our other products as well. Um, so please keep that in mind. Um, we're, we're definitely here to support you in your installs and your deployments. Um, we, we, we definitely appreciate you all as a customer. Now I'll, I'll stop talking here and uh, I'll let David kind of review a few interesting um, 
uh, things on the live demo here. So I'll put myself on mute. David, decide if you want to take us there. Okay, let me go ahead and share my screen here. Okay, so I'm going to just do a, a brief demo of the DSS 200G switch to go over the surveillance mode just to see, just to show you an example of what type of interface you'll be seeing. So let me go ahead and log in here. And so what you'll see here is you'll, when you first log in, you'll get presented with a welcome wizard. Now there's two modes with our surveillance switch. There's a standard mode and there's also a surveillance mode. Um, standard, they both say, they both uh, save to the same config file. So whatever you do in the standard mode or whatever you do in the surveillance mode, it'll stay, it'll be basically saving it to the same config file. So um, if you switch back and forth, it's going to be the same settings regardless. Now, once you log into the surveillance mode, you can see right away, um, if you're familiar with an, a standard IT switch, you, you, you have more radio button options, it's more text-based, but with the surveillance mode, this is more security focused. So this is kind of what makes this switch different from a, a traditional network switch. And so what you're presented here, you have your, your task bar, your menu bar on the left-hand side here, and then you have your topology view. And the topology view will detect on with cameras, as Chris mentioned earlier, it'll give you the number of cameras that detected. Um, and this is all based on OnViv. If there's any NVRs on, uh, connected to this switch, and it also gives you some alerts that it's uh, been presented. Uh, if you go into this device information tab here, it'll give you information about the switch um, model number, what switch you have, the current hardware revision, uh, the management IP address, the gateway that it's been used, and then other information in event that you need to, you know, make sure you have the latest firmware, what firmware version you're on. You, know, you can get all that information real easily. You can, you know, find out right from this dashboard or this main area here. And then when you scroll down to the main section here, it'll give you some more information, um, high level overview of the PoE utilization, what ports are being used. So you can see an example here, we have 518 watts of total PoE budget. We're only using 1% of the, the PoE. Um, ports two and 10, we can see are, are using PoE. Um, so, right, so when you log into a switch, you know. You want to make sure you know what what ports are being powered. What you know what's their utilization. It gives you a real easy snapshot of uh, of your PoE distribution. As you hover down here, you can get your your total bandwidth. And again, based on port, uh, it has an option to do based on the 1,000 megabits per second, or you can uh, change this graph down to 500 or 50 megabits per second. And you can see we have a couple cameras or devices here that are using some bandwidth. And if you hover over it, you can see the the total bandwidth per port. And then just some other diagnostic information that you get to see is the CP utilization uh, over time. You know, if there's a loop or something happened, you know, the switch is at 75%, then you, it gives you an a, a, a idea, a rough idea that there might be something um, causing switch to have a high CPU, CPU utilization. Uh, then you have your RAM information, uh, rotating speed, this is reference to the fan. Um, so if, if it's the fans are high, you know, there might be something in terms of heating that might be, need to be addressed to keep the switches in a, a, a more a cooler environment to make sure that they're not uh, having to ramp up their fans to keep the switch um, at an optimal temperature. So just good, good diagnostics, firmware, PU utilization, throughput, uh, gives you a, a, a high level overview of the switch. Now back to the dashboard, this is where you get a lot of all their uh, useful information. Um, so the switch will, as I mentioned, will detect OnViv cameras. Um, it gives you these uh, colored outlines here. So it'll give you a blue outline if the device is being powered by PoE and is up and operational. So we can see here, we have an alibi camera. It's blue outline, so we know that it's powered by PoE. The great thing about the switch is, since it's using OnViv to detect the information from these cameras, it's going to be able to uh, show you the IP address. So if you, let's say, are a remote, you know, you have a, there's an issue um, at one of your customer site, 
you're able to, uh, you know, if you have access to remote into their network, you can instantly see um, which cameras are being powered by PoE. If you hover over their icon, you can see what IP address that particular camera is, uh, what model number, so you can reference exactly what, what model that camera is, and then you can see the power consumption. So you get a lot of good information. Uh, and if you do have issues, you can always go and easily click on this button here. And it'll give you a pop-up if you want to go ahead and disable or enable the, the power. Maybe it's just a camera that just needs to be rebooted and get back up to operational. The other nice thing too is you do have uh, these link indicators, link light indicators. So orange will tell you if it's uh, 10 100, or in this case, if, as you see this other device here, it's green. So that tells you it's, it's a one gig uh, connection. Um, so not only cameras, but it also tell you other devices. These are just um, some other switches I have uplinked to this current switch. It's not gonna show you an icon because these are not obvious devices, but at least it gives you an idea of, you know, you know what that in port seven, this is not a camera, it's it's a, you know, non IP based or non obvious device. So you get a, a better map of your, your topology and what's connected to the switch. Now, if there are issues, you know, customer calls and, you know, there's a camera that's not working, you know, I'm not sure what's going on here. You can simply log in. And so an example, we have this camera here, port 18, um, it's outlined in red and that just, provides you an alert that there is an issue with this camera. Um, so in this case, it's the PD Alive that Chris talked about earlier. You know, it, the switch is basically saying, um, it's an PD Alive is enabled. We're, we're sending pings to this camera, but we're not getting any responses. So um, there's something wrong with this camera. Um, maybe there's the wrong IP address. Maybe there's some sort of cabling issue. It gives you a lot of information. Uh, it gives you an idea of what that symptom might be a symptom that you can uh, further check on. There's some other things that I'll give you in terms of if there, there are issues, if there's um, issues with the cable, if there's um, you know a half duplex inadvertently set on the port. Um, if you have, even in the SFP, if someone puts in the 10 gig fiber optic SFP in one of these uplinks, it'll alert you that there's a mismatch in the SFP. So it gives you some uh, information about what the potential error is and that way you can quickly address it. So um, I always think about, you know, if, like I mentioned, if you're remote or even just on site, they have tons of cameras everywhere. It's just a real easy way to just see um, IP addresses, if there's any issues with POE, um, if there's any obvious symptoms, it's going to highlight in a red outline that you can um, address quickly and more efficiently with your customers. Uh, the other thing too is that you have some other additional information here. If we go down to port information. So the port, here's some additional information um, about port information, about um, the devices that are connected to the switch. So this will show you um, surveillance cameras and, and non-surveillance cameras. Um, you can see, um, you know, so example port two, you can see that the inbound um, uh, throughput on this port, 3.1 megabits, you can see if the PoE is enabled, uh, if there's PoE utilization that's being used, uh, you can see that there's on this port, there's 90 watts that are being used or, or capable. So you have a 90 watt port capable. So if you have an installer, you want to, you know, you're not don't have the data sheets handy, you're not familiar with the switch, what port support BT, you can quickly log into the switch and look through these ports and you'll see that ports one through eight, you know, you have 90 watts to play with uh, or up to 90 watts capable. So you have, you know, you can put your, your, more power hungry cameras on these ports. And then if you go down, you can see 30 watts. So uh, it gives you an easy way to um, to manage your cameras and determine which ones are gonna be uh, to what ports. Now it gives you some IP camera information. This is only more, like I mentioned, IP camera. So this will give you uh, your total throughput um, just for camera view. Uh, it also gives you the IP addresses of all your cameras. So instead of, you know, other way, the other way I showed you was the dashboard where you have to hover over each port. Uh, if you just want a simple snapshot, you know, just give me a list of all the cameras and what their IP addresses are. You can come quickly in this menu and uh, see all see all your IP addresses of all your on detected cameras. Uh, also gives you an option to uh, edit description. So uh, if you want to put, you know, front doorway or parking lot A or parking lot B, you can come in here and add that description. Um, and that description um, will also be when you hover over the 
icons in the initial dashboard, it'll show you the description. So you know, you know this, you know, camera one is at uh, is at a particular doorway and you have a reference for that. And PO utilization, this is just going to give you more detailed information about your POE um, budget and utilization. So uh, as I mentioned, this is a 500 watt POE budget capable switch. Uh, you can easily see that we're using up to about 10 watts or about 2% of our POE budget. Um, and then it tells you um, uh, what these cameras uh, are classifying at. So we can see we have three .AF cameras. Uh, if we had some AT cameras, you can see you know how many you would have here, and then your BT cameras you would have. So a nice summary, um, just specific to POE, um, just to make sure you allocate the the right amount of cameras according to the budgets available. Um, I'll jump over to the PDLI. This is what Chris was talking about earlier. Um, so we have uh, an example. We have a camera that's on port 10. We can see PD is alive because we enabled that dip switch that uh, Chris talked about earlier. We uh, entered in the POE, I'm sorry, the IP address of the camera, 20.102. Uh, and we had it to check, basically check the cameras every uh, 30 seconds. Um, and then it, it basically will notify us if there's an issue, it will see it in the dashboard we saw earlier and it will get a syslog message about the um, issue about that camera. So uh, nice information, real easy to submit or to uh, configure. Um, just punch in the IP address of the cameras and then you can select what type of action you want. Uh, the other thing too is uh, when you're in this uh, surveillance mode, it automatically puts cameras in their own surveillance VLAN. So uh, instead of um, you know everything in, in the same VLAN, you have you know access points or you have some access control devices, things that are not surveillance related, um, you know, typical switch, you have to configure that. It might be a little bit more challenging if you're not familiar with the network switching, but with surveillance mode, it makes it easy. Uh, it'll detect all of cameras and it'll put them in your particular VLAN. So in this case, it's the VLAN 20. Um, it'll detect all the cameras uh, and then you can select your uplink port. So right now ports 25 and 28, those are our fiber ports on this switch. So uh, we have our uplink set to to those fiber ports. And if you want something different, if you do want to use the, a copper port, you can come in here and change those uplink ports and it'll automatically do the VLAN tagging. So you don't have to uh, you know, configure that. It'll automatically do that for you. Uh, and the last two things I'll show you is a surveillance log and then we'll jump into the health diagnostics. But the surveillance log is, is just that. It gives you information about um, you would connect a, a, a camera to the port. It'll uh, detect the camera, it'll then uh, watch DHCP packets, and then it'll populate what IP address that camera was issued. So, um, and then the MAC address that it's associated with. So you can determine, okay, you know, I added a camera, you can see it here, uh, make sure that it recognized that camera and it was added to the surveillance um, VLAN. Another nice thing is to have is a health diagnostic. So um, Chris mentioned earlier, fans are, um, you know, generally what might go wrong, uh, just moving parts, but a lot of other more common things are, are just bad cabling. Um, uh, there might be some cable that's just old, maybe it's just not a, a good quality cable. Um, so you can come in here into the health diagnostics and do a, a, do a, a test and it will determine uh, the cable quality if it's detecting errors on the cable, uh, if PoE is being uh, powered properly, um, your, 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 your speed and your duplex on the cable. Um, and then another nice thing is uh, that can bring down a network is a network loop. So uh, when you're in surveillance mode, it'll automatically detect uh, network loops and it'll automatically shut that port down if you do. Uh, if someone inadvertently creates a loop in the network, it'll shut that port down and alert you with that health diagnostic. Another thing too is that you can detect the cables. Um, so, you know, you're able to determine uh, how how far that cable is. Um, you know, if it's over that 100 meter, if you're trying to do that extended uh, distance, you can do a, a detect distance just to verify that the cable, you know, if you did a 200 meter cable that it's actually, actually detecting 200 meters and not something shorter than that. And that will give you an, an idea if it, if it is and there might be some issue with the cable. So it gives you some nice health diagnostics that you can see here. 
Um, and then just quickly, just wanted to show you this, this standard mode here. If you do have some more, um, more in-depth configurations that you need to do, IGMP snooping, if you want to do um, some other VLANs from some other devices, you still have the traditional UI where you can log in and come into these into the switch and, and make those changes if you want. And you can, like I mentioned, it saves everything to the same config file. So whatever you do in the standard mode will also um, apply to the surveillance mode. So you, you still have those options if you do need to get into some more advanced uh, configurations with the switch. So um, if you have any questions, feel free to let us know. Um, appreciate your time and I'll pass this back over, over to Chris. That's great. So before Chris jumps back in, um, somebody asked about the products and whether they're TAA compliant or not. I know like all all of your products are NDAA. Are you also TAA compliant? I'll have to look because uh, we have different various manufacturing sites yeah. that we that we work from China, Taiwan, Philippines, different areas. And I know uh, when COVID hit and tariffs hit and all that, we had to diversify our manufacturing. So I, I could definitely find out and uh, and let you all know. Yeah, so like like a lot of the DGS 1210s, um, we mm -hmm. have some TA models. Um, so just if right. you do have a need for TA, just um, let us know, contact your account rep. Uh, we could get them that information. Uh, they do have a, a complete line though. Yeah, that's a good call out. Uh, there are any additional questions right now. I think we kind of answered them along the way. One was about re advanced replacement. I think Norman addressed that one. The other one was TAA. So, you know, I, I, I don't know if there's anything else that you guys can cover that you want to touch on before we close this out, but I want to thank you guys for your time. You know, I personally, I'm super excited about this switch line because it, it, it really serves our, our channel partners that we serve really, really well, right? I mean, they're out there living surveillance day in, day out, and to have a manufacturing partner, a technology partner, deliver something that is visually easy to, to understand, it makes it super easy to use from a UI perspective. You know, as a dumb marketing guy, I look at that UI, I go, I love that. I can look at pictures and it can tell me what's going on with all the different devices plugged into that switch. And it helps me diagnose problems. And then with that, some of that smart management capability, be able to do stuff remotely instead of rolling a truck, right? And we're always talking about how we help our dealer partners make more money and stay profitable. And, and as soon as you run that truck the second time, you're losing a lot of the margin and devices like this make it a lot easier to, to properly maintain and service your customer base out there in the field after you've, after you've already done the initial installation. So that's super exciting. I think when Chris sent us that info, we were just saying, like, finally a switch, you know, for, for surveillance. Traditionally, it's always <laughs> it's IT or VoIP or it's just everything but surveillance. So it's, it's, yeah. it's awesome to have one. Yeah, it's great. And I believe, so let's talk about the delivery time frame. We've already got these set up in our system. I believe we're taking pre-orders online. What's the actual delivery of these? I think we're like maybe a week and a half or two weeks away from actually receiving these, Chris. Correct. Yeah. So these are... They might be even at our HQ warehouse already in the US. Um, and again, it's a new line for us, but it's not new, new, new. Again, it's it's really taken from all the feedback of our, our, our other products, our 1100, our 1210, 1510, and then simplified it for a, a use case for installing surveillance networks, access control. So it's not, and in, in, in essence, it's, it's not an experiment type of product. This is a vetted product that pieces of it have been in different lines mm -hmm. but now it's all together in one 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 switching line and it's an affordable price um again with the lifetime warranty and there's iterations of the max power and the max power plus models depending on the poe uh budget you guys are looking for so um we're excited to see how it does and performs in in, in, in the north america market um but again it's just thank you so much for this time to review this product with you all and we look forward to the next webinar. Yeah, you bet. Well, we, we appreciate the time again. And David, we appreciate you waking up early. I will say if any of our dealer partners who are on today wanted a little bit more of a deep dive on the product, 
get in touch with your dedicated account manager. We can always pull Chris and or David into the mix. You know, if you have specific projects that you're thinking about deploying something like this on and you want a little bit more information, you know, if you've got questions about how specialty cameras and kind of uh, power consumption works on these switches and how this may make it easier, um, feel free to ping us. Come, come with your toughest challenges and your toughest questions because we got the smartest guys in the room right here who can answer any of your networking questions as it relates to this product. So we're uh, super excited to be bringing on this line. And like I said, if you want to deep dive in, contact your account manager. They're going to get ramped up on this here in the next two weeks. Uh, but more importantly, we've got the subject matter expert right down the street from us. We can tap into Chris and David's knowledge base to help you guys understand how this product can help you uh, do a better job of installing and managing the networks for your customers out there. So we appreciate everybody's time today. Uh, again, thanks for joining us. We know there are a lot of other things you can be doing. Uh, we'll look forward to seeing everybody on our next webinar session. Uh, thanks again, Chris. Thanks, David. Thank you, Norman. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, everyone. All right. Take care.